This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. Good morning, healthcare heroes. Uh, I'm sorry that we're not armed with bagels. Apparently, Einstein's are not essential workers. They were closed when I drove up to the snowy uh, Einstein's entrance. Okay, so we're going to review a study which was published in November 2020 called IV Haldol versus Ondansetron for Cannabis Hyperemesis Syndrome, a randomized controlled trial. So certainly pertinent to our patients, right? We see tons of people who are here with cyclical vomiting, uh, some of it attributed to uh, daily Uh, marijuana use. So this was an interesting study. It was conducted in the ER, and I believe it was conducted in Canada, although I'm not sure. They took um, patients who had been identified as having cannabis hyperemesis, lots of our patients, right? And they said, we're going to randomize you. You're either going to get Zofran or you're going to get haloperidol in a high dose or a low dose. And this is pertinent to us, right? Um, Our goal is to get these people feeling better as soon as they can and get them home. Uh, and so we should, we want to know what, what should we start with? So they're randomized to either get, let me check the doses, um, eight milligrams of Zofran or 0.05 mg per kg of Haldol or 0.1 mg per kg of Haldol. And the reason that's important to know those numbers, cause that's actually higher than we usually give, you know, typically we're doing 2.5 or maybe five of Haldol. And theirs, if you calculate it out for just a standard size male, the 70 kilo male, they would have gotten either 3.5 milligrams of Haldol at the low dose or 7 milligrams of Haldol or more, maybe even up to 10 milligrams of Haldol um, for their first dose. So these were pretty big, these are pretty big numbers. It was an interesting study design because their goal was to have people participate in each of the three arms. So when they consented them, they were basically assuming, you'll be back, we're gonna give you a different medicine next time. So they filled out a consent and they were agreeing to get a different um, type of medication on each visit. It was triple blinded, meaning the physicians didn't know what the patients were getting and the nurses didn't know what the patients were getting and the patients didn't know what they were getting. So the way that they did that was you would basically just click that they were gonna get some anti-emetic and then a separate nurse would come in with like a secret envelope and administer a secret medication so nobody knew what they were actually getting. And then the results were they were measuring how long it took them to get home, how much rescue medication they needed of something different, and then they rated their abdominal pain and nausea on a 10-point scale. And at first when I read that, I thought, like, shouldn't there be some more objective measure of when they're ready to get go home? Like, are they still vomiting? But if you think about our patients, really, they kind of tell us when they're ready to go home, right? It's very subjective if, if they just say, like, oh, okay, I can go now. That's when we send them home. So how do you think we did? on the three different medications, what was the? High dose Haldol. High dose Haldol, yeah, so you're right. They actually only did, this is a small study, they only had like 30 patients. So they ended up bunching the two Haldol groups together to uh, analyze the statistics, but the Haldol did better on all measures. So on their 10 point scale of like 10, you're so much better, you know, one, you're horrible. Uh, there was actually a difference of 2.5, um, which is pretty significant. Uh, and then in terms of their time to home, it was 3.1 hours with the Ondansetron versus 5.6 hours with the Haldol, which is a long time. Uh, okay, downsides. What do you think the downsides would be of giving high-dose Haloperidol? Sleep. Sleep, yeah. Maybe that was part of the 5.6 hours. They were just totally gorked. So it was the, you know, what we call extra pyramidal side effects, specifically dystonia. So people who get the like acute torticollis in their neck and then you have to follow up with some Benadryl or Cogentin, that was significantly higher in the Haldol group and specifically in the high dose Haldol group. And so, you know, in general, I think this supports our practice here and suggests that for this population, we should probably skip the Zofran and just go straight to the Haldol. Again, their doses were kind of like 3.5 to 7 or higher, and we're usually giving lower doses. So I'd say 2.5 of Haldol all the way. All right, that's it. Thanks. The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA, PRA, 
Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.